Pay. This is Odean. Today I'm having a look at Cubex Old Timer Series number one huff. Obviously a version of a third party G1 huffer. Huffer was always a favourite of mine. I never could get the toy when I was a kid. No one would give it to me and I ended up hunting a G1 version of it down off eBay as an adult. But uh, something about huffer always just... Uh, excited me and I think it was because of the episode where he gets to actually take Prime's trailer it seemed like he was a little guy who could do big things I really like the way this looked and um, I know there's another Huffer on the market there was never any question in my mind which Huffer I was going to get and that's just because this one looks so much like the toy in truck mode and so much like the cartoon uh, model in robot mode so I still may end up getting the pipes from the other bunch but for me this is the best huffer looking at it right up close like this you can see that it's got a lot of uh, fit and finish so we've got paint details on the door handles there some little light details nice black trim around the window actual see-through clear windows which I really like uh, a lot of toys these days don't have see-through actually clear instead of tinted windows I appreciate it when they do on the front we've got some lights here and importantly to notice in the transformation these lights actually flip around to hide which you know there was no that wasn't necessary that much for the transformation but I like the idea that they armor up in uh, vehicle mode just a pity they couldn't get the windshield to flip over that would have been even cooler the wheels are not rubber they're just plastic that's probably the only thing I've got going against this figure really but uh, Masterpiece aren't rubber for the most part these days anyway, so uh, I guess it's nothing too unexpected there. It's got a nice silver paint. I'm not a huge fan of chrome, so I like silver paint just like this is done. And when it gets into the realms of really polished up chrome, it really depends on the figure. But just in general, I prefer a good silver paint. So that's another reason this guy stands out as far as I'm concerned. Here's a bit of a size comparison with Classic's uh, Hound. So I feel like these are pretty well scaled. He's in a kind of mid-range, you know. He's he's uh, big enough to be a truck in Classic's, a little bit too small to be a truck for vehicle mode in Masterpiece, but in robot mode, he's really perfectly sized, I feel, in Masterpiece. So he fits both camps quite well, and it's it's just up to how far you can stretch it in your imagination really in Masterpiece whether he belongs or not. He does pull Prime's trailer pretty well though. Looking at this back section here, this is actually uh, dual purpose. This little plate is part of his gun in robot mode but tabs on or pegs on between his feet here so that if you bend up his ankles like this and then flip out this little panel We've got a stand to hold Optimus Prime's trailer. I haven't done it so well there. It's a little bit hard, a little bit tricky to do on camera. Uh, let's get the trailer and join it on. You can see in the top there's two slots and Prime's trailer actually has two little uh, rectangular things that can slot down into those two slots. And you can see that's, that's bonded with it pretty securely. Now that I don't find that that bit tabs in, but um, what it does do is hold it there. So once it's in, he can pull Prime's trailer and it all works quite well actually, better than what I would have thought. The only downside is that he bumps into the trailer because he's a little bit close to it. Now there is a gap between the bed of his truck and the trailer, but honestly in person you don't notice that, especially from most of the angles that I view it at, it looks pretty perfect so only from sideways like this you even notice that there's a gap there I love this it's just recreated a scene from the cartoon on my shelf and it's very very fun to have that something that puts it just over the top for awesomeness is that if you pop this up this panel at the back you can see that there's uh, access here I'm going to get Spike from Masterpiece Prime MP10 he can drive this truck. Look, he's inside, actually driving Huffer. I mean, how cool is that? That is fantastic. 
I mean, it's not too secure. You can see he can flop around in there. There's not really a seat, but uh, maybe just a dot of blue tack, and he would be held in pretty well. Let's get the transformation happening. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop up this panel. You can see um, normally has this gun in here. I did pull that out before I showed Spike a minute ago. It's very hard to pull this straight out. The instructions show actually later in the transformation pushing your finger through this side to pop it up. But uh, if I grab a screwdriver, I can probably pop it up. Now, it's probably not, not a good idea to do it this way. Okay, I did it. Uh, I wouldn't do it that many times. It's, it's not shown that way in the instructions, and it does cause it a bit of stress. Anyway, after that, I'm going to pop off this piece from the feet. That can join with the silver bit a bit later for the gun. Next, you want to grab these little covers here and open them up. Now, it's important to note that this section with the flat panel is on the outside. Uh, sometimes this whole thing can pop off, and if you put it back on upside down, these will be the wrong way, and you'll never get the closure to shut again. Next, just extend it out like this. Grab these panels, bend them up like that. Now, depending on how stiff and tight your tolerances are, this can be a bit tricky. You've got to unpeg the fists from within this section here. And, you know, if there's any weak spot on this toy, it's doing this part here. I'm going to actually poke a screwdriver in there. Because I don't want to... I don't want to break it off. And I forgot to mention, these fists are the opening and closing fists. So, opening the fist as it comes out can help a little bit. See, I'm making it look a lot worse than it is. Um, this is what I mean about that popping off. Now, it's nothing severe, and doing it on camera is harder than doing it in your lap by yourself because I'm holding it at arm's length but it is a little bit hard to get those fists out. Next you want to make sure that this panel is well and truly kind of up as far as it can go out of your way. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a nuisance. Like that and the wheels fold back. Then once you've done that you bring it forward again and bend it into this position so you can't see that cavity. Next we're going to open up this chest panel. You can see the head in there. Fold that head up. Now we want to bend these shoulders but before we do that let's just make sure that it's slid down a little bit because once they kind of go up into this position we want this sliding action to put the tabs down into them to lock them. If you try to force it in without that slide it might break the tabs off. Close up the chest. Make sure that's all tabbed in. We're almost done now. Let's rotate these arms around to get them into a nicer position and fill in the tops with the little bullet shaped parts. Maybe a little bit of adjustment at these swivels to get it in the right, uh, facing the right way. Let's turn him around, open up this now. Now there's a cavity in the back. What we can do is uh, position these so that they're facing each other and basically just flip it over so that it is inside instead of outside. That just uh, neatens up how it looks on the outside a little bit. Grab the legs and extend them. Uh, which way do these go? Let's open up these flaps and rotate the wheel into the flap. Now one thing to be cautious of is that this little bit which bends like this, it doesn't actually have clearance. You gotta flex it over the wheel and it's that thing which keeps the flap partially closed. So be careful, but don't worry about it too much. It does bend somewhat. Tab that uh, butt guard in. Rotate the legs to be facing in the right direction so that the cavities are on the back. Bend up the knees. Flatten these out because they make the feet. That's about it. Now these don't tab in super well. That's a little bit annoying as well. Uh, there's nothing much you can do about that. Also, depending on your personal preference, you might like to play with this knee configuration just to get it in the middle. Uh, it's stiff enough at the moment that friction will hold it there. I don't know how long 
it will last that way. That's it, half is transformed. We do have these parts left over, so what I'm going to do is untab these two. We're going to bend the pointy bit of the gun out like that, fold up this little flap here, and which way does this go? I think it goes this way. This is going to be the handle of the gun, and then we can just put it back together again, squeeze it so it stays, and that's Huffer's gun. And he holds it pretty damn well too. Now, isn't he a nice looking figure? Uh, I've got the original head on, I think. He doesn't actually come with this head in the box on his body. This head is packaged in a little uh, insert in the tray. The other things that this guy comes with are these pieces here. So you can see these are permanently closed fists and a new design of the head. The main differences are that this face has diamond, more diamond shaped eyes and a more uh, rounded lip area. Both are fine with me. Uh, this looks more G1 I think, but the other one looks a little bit more serious. I've got no problems with each of these and I'm perfectly happy. The only problem I've got with the head at all really is that uh, this section here is pretty floppy so you can't pose him looking up because his head will always just fall down and it's got nothing to do with how tightly you screw this I've screwed it uh, very tightly and it's not really the same thing there's a pin that goes through there and it's just loose here's a robot mode scale shot with masterpiece smokescreen and as I said I'm very very happy with the scale of this and I know it's Transformers scale pff, who cares but uh, I do care for masterpiece and I feel that he is just right. Uh, I know he's a truck, he should be bigger, but from what I remember on the cartoon, that's about how big I like him to be. And they do look good together. I mean, the degree of complexity might not be quite as much as a Takara masterpiece, but it's, it's pretty good. If there's any criticism, it's probably just that uh, its engineering tolerances and ideas are a little bit less durable. They feel like they might break if you do it too many times but I won't be doing it too many times, so I'm not too worried about that. Here's how Huff scales with Fans Project Code. They're a very similar size, so as I said before, he goes well with Deluxe Transformers. This is pretty deluxe sized, and he definitely doesn't look out of place there. So either way, either way your collection goes, he's a good figure for uh, robot mode. But I guess that theory starts to fall apart if you're going to be posing him with brand new deluxes because these deluxes are way too small so when you put him with a a current deluxe like this year it it's a little bit his head looks massive in comparison to that so uh, maybe he's not meant for this but you know these don't look good enough to keep on my shelf honestly anyway he's so chintzy looking that uh, I don't think these guys should ever be put together to begin with he does feel much more at home with Generations Voyages, and I'm loving the current crop of Voyages. Like, I, I absolutely love these two that you see here. So, uh, you know, as a fan, I think we're going Voyager, and this guy fits pretty perfectly with those guys as well. For posability and balance, his posability is great. He's got double jointed knees, his elbows have 90 degrees, which is, is pretty good. Balance is not too bad, like he's standing on one foot there. Like, that's that's a good solid degree of motion for there on the uh, knee. Ankle tilts, wide range, like a universal joint at the shoulder. Actually, oh, look at that, it is double jointed elbow as well. So it's more than 90 degrees at the elbow. Waist swivel. You know, ever since I saw uh, Perfect Effect Warden, ever since I got that, I keep for a split second, they always go with these guys to do an ab crunch. Alas, no ab crunch, but awesome posability and good, good balance. You would think with this huge thing on the back of his uh, head up here, he would be more likely to fall over. But you know what? He hardly ever does fall over. It's, it's balanced off pretty well. And you know, there's these things here. I think they can bend out more. So if you do find that he falls over too much, you can bend the heel out a little bit extra just to give it 
uh, even more stability. I like the look of it with them in, but definitely out, it works even better. My final thoughts. This is really worth getting. The price is not that much, um, you know, about 60 bucks. It's pretty fantastic. I'm very happy with it. I got a whole bunch of stuff this week. Like I got a crap ton of things that I'm going to review, a uh, couple of big boxes that I got. Some of those things I was very unhappy with and pretty disappointed, and I was thinking, which thing am I going to review first? I reached in and grabbed the thing I like best. So out of my current crop of stuff that I just bought, maybe uh, 15 different things, this guy is number one. So I mean, let's put it this way. He's one of the things I got in that box. No thanks. He's not number one. Uh, what else have I got here? Huff is beating Revolver as far as I'm concerned. So they're some pretty high profile things and for me Huff is definitely the winner. He's just so characterful and he works and he looks great in truck and robot mode. I'm very happy with him. So that's been my video review for Cubex Old Timer Series number one Huff. I'm Odean. Thanks for watching.